Okay, so the meeting is now recorded. Uh, so let's start. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode uh, 45 of Warsaw Quantum Computing Group meetings. Uh, today, um, Przemysław Michalowski from Poland will give an introduction to Kiskit. Uh, before we start, just an announcement. Uh, if you have uh, any questions, you can post your questions on our chat and at the end there will be q and a session uh Chemek, is it fine for you to have this uh, lecture also interactive so that people could also ask you questions during the talk yes and if there are any questions that uh, let's say i i would uh i will be able to like answer immediately then i think i will even answer them during the lecture Okay, good. I, I will make some breaks from time to time and look. At All the right. Chat. Okay, so I will also just try to try to interrupt if I see some urgent questions regarding the uh, materials that you are presenting. Uh, but otherwise, if there are some more general questions, then we'll keep them for the Q and A session at the end. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, this meeting is recorded. So hopefully, the video will be later available on our YouTube channel. Before we start, we would like to thank our strategic partners, Snart and Cogit, for supporting us and our honorary partners for helping us uh, advertising, promoting this uh, this meetup. And uh, yeah, I think we can start. So I will now stop sharing my slides and Przemek, uh, the Zoom is yours. So if you are ready, we can start. Okay. Uh... This should be fine. Okay, so you yes. should be able to see my screen. And one thing I will also do is um, maybe I will upload the link to this notebook on the chat so everyone can like uh, download it to their own hard drive. Um, if anyone okay. would like to follow interactively. Um, Okay. Okay. Mm. So um, let me start. So uh, the agenda uh, is as follows. So first of all, I will say a few words about the Kiskit itself. Then I will uh, present to you some basic information about the Kiskit, like uh, how you write some basic programs. Then we will go to measurement. We will spend some time here. Uh, then also we will talk about uh, some information, about the information you can extract from the quantum circuits. Then I will switch for a moment to IBM platform to show uh, you how uh, you can write in Qiskit and then execute uh, the Qiskit code on a real quantum computer. Uh, and then um, I will show you also how to, um, let's say, implement some arbitrary operations that are not directly implemented in Qiskit. And uh, at the very end, I will say a few words about transpilation, but this more as the bonus. Okay, um, so first of all, I would like to uh, show you Kiskit as a tool that's, that is uh, included as a Python package. And why is it so? Because if we are doing it on our own computers, on our classical computers, then we are not doing any quantum operation. We are only doing some simulations. So first of all, um, we are not able to achieve any quantum advantage using Qiskit and classical computer, but we can make simulation and then prepare ourselves to deploy uh, some real quantum algorithm on a quantum computer. Um, but um, the point is that you can learn and make some experiments using Qiskit. And moreover, uh, what I will also show later, you can execute Qiskit as a quantum code and also translate it to OpenCASM, which is a quantum 
which is a quantum assembly language. Okay. So um, here you can see that the first two lines um, allows you to download Qiskit. And uh, since I have already installed it, then I don't need to launch the cell. You can launch uh, the cell by using uh, console plus enter. And, but uh, this one I won't launch. Mm, and by using uh, this hash or whatever you called it, you can comment a block. So it won't execute. And for today, we will need, of course, Qiskit, but also NumPy will come in handy. Okay, but how to start? So as in every, or I would say most Python programs, uh, we need to start by downloading uh, some useful functions. And if you are familiar with Python, then uh, I think it will be easy, but if you are not, then uh, I, I have, I prepare, I made, I will try to make it as simple as possible. So how uh, do we do it? So we write from Qiskit, and then we type import, and then we type um, the names of objects we will be using. And we will be using quantum register, and classical register, and um, quantum circuit. So what are those three objects? A quantum register um, is an object that will store our qubits. So it will be a place where quantum bits are stored. Classical register will store our classical bits and quantum circuit will put this together, put those uh, two or more registers uh, together. So um, that's a very standard line that uh, we will be using through the whole lecture. And like, um, I think we will memorize it by doing it many, many times. So um, first of all, use those registers. So I will define a quantum register and name it Q. It's simply, and it's very frequently used. So I would write it like this. And then um, I need to pass the number of qubits that will be in this quantum register. So let's say that um, because it's our first example, I would like to have just one quantum bit. And then I can also pass a label. A label is just um, a name that will be displayed on the visualization. It does not affect the code, but uh, it might be helpful to visualize our code because uh, quantum codes let's, uh, have some style of being visualized with I wish. So I will name, I will give it label QREC, uh, a short um, abbreviation from quantum register. And then let's uh, declare a classical register. And let's say I would like to have only one bit similarly, and also give it a label, let's call it CREC. Uh, as I have written below, uh, in Python, it doesn't matter if you write the label um, in uh, using this sign or this sign, it doesn't matter, but Let's be consistent, and I would be using uh, double quotes. And then we need to declare a quantum circuit. Uh, I would name it QC. And a quantum circuit uh, can con uh, consist of many quantum register and many classical register, but it can also consist um, of only one quantum and classical register. And here I need to pass the name of those registers um, and separate them by comma. And one note here, um, Python and Qiskit will automatically detect uh, what kind of register are the past registers. So you don't need to specify in the quantum circuit um, 
declaration, uh, what kind of register are you passing? It will automatically detect it uh, because the object Q is a quantum register, so it will be automatically detected. And as I said, uh, we can visualize our circuit. And, and for that, we need to use draw method. And how to use a method? So first of all, you need to write the name of the object and the method is acting on. So in this case, it will be our quantum circuit, which is named QC. Then press a dot and uh, type this method. So draw. And let's uh, launch our code. So here you see an empty quantum circuit. It's displayed here because we used uh, the QC draw method. And um, in the notebook I shared with you, uh, there is a, it's, this method is wrapped in display function because um, in the Jupyter notebook, if, for example, I would, let's say, write it here, then it won't be displayed because then um, Jupyter will only display only the uh, latest line of code passed, so only the result of the line of the last line, uh, until we explicitly uh, tell Python to display an object. Okay, and here are the other ways to define a quantum circuit. So here um, we can also directly um, pass the registers into the quantum circuit object without creating them. And as I have written here, the first number is a number of qubits and the second one, the number of bits. Another uh, way to define a quantum circuit, it's very similar to this one, but here you um, explicitly tell Qiskit what kind of uh, registers of quantum or classical you are creating. If you use uh, this syntax, then the first number is a number of qubits and you will have only one quantum register and only one classical register. Here you can have more quantum registers and more classical registers, but you need to explicitly tell uh, which register is which one and how many qubits or bits, as in here, uh, you want to have in each register. And here I also mentioned it again, that you can have many registers of one kind inside a one circuit, and you can also give them separate levels. Let's execute this code. So here is the first circuit, the first quantum circuit. It has a quantum register with one qubit and a classical register with one classical bit. Here you have uh, another quantum circuit, so this one. So it has uh, the first registers, which is Q0, with four qubits, one, uh, zero, one, two, and three, and another quantum register, Q1, with three qubits, zero, one, and two, and the classical register with four bits. And the last, uh, let's say, method also specifies the labels of those, so explicitly. They are here are they are written explicitly. So instead of Q1, you have QR uh, instead of Q0 and Q1, you have QR0 and QR1. Mm, but uh, the syntax I recommend is this one, where you explicitly uh, tell which register is which and how many quantum bits and classical bits it uh, has. So we will stay with this syntax. Okay, so um, let's apply some gates, so quantum operation. And if you are already familiar with basics of uh, quantum computing, um, there are many kinds of gates, there are many kinds of operations you can apply to your uh, 
to your quantum circuit and to qubits especially. And many of them are already pre-specified. They are well known in the quantum industry. Um, here are the names of some of them. So here is the Pauli X, also called not gate. And it what uh, it does, it, it, it switches the state of the qubit to the opposite one around the X axis. Here you have a scheme, um, a block called a block sphere, uh, where all the possible states of a qubit are shown. And at the very beginning, all the qubits um, have this, are in the state cat zero. So this one, the opposite orthogonal, but here is a problem that this visualization should be four dimensional. But here is, there is a trick that allows us to visualize the qubit in three dimensions. So despite this state is orthogonal to this state, it doesn't look like this, but trust me, it is. But uh, if, if you are like beginning, with, if you are a beginner, then it might be not obvious, but later on, I'm sure it will be. And so most of the, uh, some basic gates are defined as the rotations around those axes. So um, a rotation around X gate will take the qubit from state zero to state one, cat one. And from cat one, it will turn it to state cat zero. Other, um, let's say, gates that are worth mentioning uh, for a beginner is the Pauli Z gate. It only changes the local phase. So it won't like um, change the possibility, the probability of getting the state zero or one when measuring. I will uh, say a few words about it later. But it's, let's say, um, let you to change your local phase. So uh, to rotate a vector representing a qubit around the other gate. So in this kind, uh, around the Z gate. So this particular gate. And there are also gates called Ry, Rx, and Rz that are um, partial uh, rotations about those gates, uh, about those axes. And also the last unit, uh, one qubit gate worth mentioning for a beginning is the Hadamard gate. A Hadamard gate is a very specific gate uh, because it, if you have a qubit in a start in a state cat zero, so the default state for a beginning, and it will change its state um, to the state where the probability um, of catching the qubit in state cat zero is 50%, and the probability of catching it in, in uh, kate in state cat one is also uh, 50%. So, and we call it an equal superposition state. And the same applies uh, when you start in a state cat one. So you have this 50 50, and it's very useful. Uh, we will also use. Uh, controlled not gate, and, but we'll come to that uh, later. I will later on explain. I see there is some, we have some questions. Um, so the default labels are Q0 and uh, Q1. When I run a circuit several times, the same labels become Q9, Q10. Um, it, so yes, it's basically uh, depends on uh, how many times you run your circuit. So if you run, I here, I run the circuit uh, for the first time. So here are uh, the labels are Q0 and Q1, but later on, uh, it will kind of uh, detect that those labels have already been used. So the labels will be uh, Q2 and Q3, then Q4 and Q5. But if I reset the notebook, uh, I will come back to this initial state, uh, so having Q0 and Q1. So it's just like a technical detail of uh, how Qiskit works, but it won't affect our uh, computation. And that's 
uh, it is worth noticing, so it's a very good question, uh, why this method of declaring quantum circuits are not recommended just because those labels will change. So it's better to be explicit. So I will make here an experiment. So here you see that we have Q0 and Q1. Now we have Q2 and Q3. Then we will have Q4 and Q5 and so on and so on. You can also hear that the classical register also changed in its, its name. Um, okay. We have also a question regarding LaTeX. So a distribution of LaTeX that provides the PDF LaTeX command needs to be installed separately used to generate um, uh, how to convert PDF LaTeX in Conda. Um, it's a good question. I, I thought it should be already built with the with this. But uh, the problem is with uh, displaying those um, labels, or it is something different. Uh, Dr. Kumar, maybe you can unmute yourself and uh, just uh, give some details if it's if the issue is still valid. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, thank you so much. Actually, I am using a Feynman path integral and uh, trying to uh, find the optimal path during the VRP problem. So today I faced this this problem. So I write up the code and then the facing always this conda has some, they are not actually the directly convert in the PDF format. So, so that's why I'm just asking because I'm also trying to design the gate also. So how actually this, the code is actually, uh, uh, feasible with this conda so i have uh, from the last two days i am facing big problems so i that's why i am just attending this i saw that in the, you you are actually giving the basic introductions so how actually this converting so i will share the uh, entire code to you uh, uh, after that so please kindly help me because uh, this is the uh, small uh, difficulties i tried many times but still not actually the every time they showing the some errors Okay, okay, so maybe I will look at this after the lecture, but I'm not sure if it's uh, if there might be a problem with Jupyter even if, if you are using it because I remember I also had some kind of problem and like changing uh, mm, the program I was writing in like uh, it was useful, but let's say I, I will look at this after the lecture, okay? Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Mm, so now let's. Uh, Przemek, there's back. one more one more general question on our chat okay, about so... the maximal number of qubits that we have right now on IBM Q. I'm not sure if you know, but uh, or maybe someone else. Uh, I think that. Uh, Maybe maybe we can try to find information on the IBM Q website first, so we, we can go on with the lecture and uh, later we'll try yes. to provide the answer on our chat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, okay. So coming back, um, let's let's uh, construct our first um, quantum circuit with some operations. So uh, we will begin. And by the usual way, so first of all, we define a quantum register, a classical register, and a quantum circuit. Here we define a quantum register with two qubits, and then we pass it together with a classic classical register to quantum circuit. And here is also a line that imports uh, pi, so three dot one three, and so on. Uh, from math uh, package, but it's already in build together with standard Python. Mm. Okay, so how in Qiskit applying the operation, so those gates I have, uh, sh I've just sh shown you, looks like. So here we use this method logic. So we write the name of the quantum circuit, 
then we place a dot, and then we um, write the abbreviation of the name of the quantum gate we want to apply. So H is, is a short from Hadamard gate, R uh, Y is a short for rotation about the R gate, and uh, CX CX is a, a short abbreviation from for a controlled node. And here, we, if you have a Hadamard gate, then we uh, we can we will begin by passing by, uh, only a single a one a single one argument, and the argument we are passing here is a num is a, is the name of the quantum register and the number of qubit. So let's launch it. So we have a quantum register with two qubits. And because uh, in Python we start uh, numbering from zero, the first qubit is indexed by zero. So here we just uh, we wrote that uh, apply Hadamard gate uh, on the quantum register named Q and on the qubit indexed by zero. And here, uh, we have also displayed it, and you can see um, on the scheme, on the drawing, that the Hadamard gate um, has been applied to qubit Q0. Also, the gate Ry has been applied to qubit Q0, which you can see here, but uh, this gate is parameterized, which means it, uh, it doesn't have fixed value. So uh, you need to pass the angle uh, by which uh, the qubit will be rotated around the uh, y uh, axis. And controlled x gate needs two qubits. And the first one is a controller, and the second one is a target. And here, uh, this sign. Uh, indicate the controller and the gate that is applied um, on the target is like displayed um, in the line corresponding to the target qubit. And the CX gate applies the X gate if the qubit Q0 is in state one. If it's if it is in state zero, then nothing happens. So the gate uh, six uh, won't be applied. Um, so it's like a basic syntax. I think it's kind of um, together. You can like um, you can use intuition like to work out what are the names of the gate. So let's say I can also apply Z gate on uh, the qubit indexed by one in the quantum register. And you can see that it has been added. Uh, we can also use a different style of drawing, uh, which uses matplotlib, uh, which is shown below. In some cases, like this one is recommended, but I think this one looks nicer, but uh, if the circuit um, is very complex, sometimes it's better to use this, but it's, I think it's up to uh, the user. Okay, so now let's talk about uh, doing operations in bulk. So here I define a bunch of quantum registers. So why to define a bunch of quantum registers? If you have a complex algorithm, and luckily, we won't be writing them because it would take too long. Uh, but uh, let's say you have um, an algorithm where, where you have your qubits and divide it into two groups, uh, where, for example, one group of qubit is responsible for one task in the algorithm, and the other group is responsible for the other task. And you may want to let's say, apply Hadamard gates to the first group 
so to the first register. So that is the point of making some operations in bulk. And so it's it's also why it's also useful to give them some intuitive uh, names. Here I named it like Q1 and uh, Q2 and Q3. But for example, you can uh, name them like quantum, like or qubits main and qubits auxiliary, or say uh, mixing register, or let's say target register, and so on and so on. Um, so here we have um, our registers already defined. I wrote it to make it faster. And uh, if I want to perform, uh, let's say, apply Hatamark gate to every qubit in the first uh, quantum register, then I do not specify in the quadratic parenthesis uh, the number of a qubit. I just type the name of the register and it will then apply uh, the operation to the every on the every qubit in this register, and we can also apply non-unary gate, so set uh, controlled not gate, which works on more than one qubit, and it will work. But we need to have an equal number of qubits in both registers. Mm. So let's execute it. And here you can see that uh, Hadamard gate uh, has been applied to the every qubit in the first register. And also uh, CX gate has been applied um, to the first and third register in a way that the qubits from the first register are um, controllers and the qubits from the third register are the targets. I also here wrote this warning because if I would like to let's say do something like this, then we will have an error because mm, the number of qubits in each register uh, need to be equal for such an operation. Okay. Mm. Uh, here are some more examples. Um, so let me execute and then I will talk about it. So we start uh, as previously. Here um, I specified the qubits uh, I would like to act on without specifying the name of the register. In this case, uh, Qiskit will just count one by one those uh, qubits uh, without um, taking into account the fact that they are from separate registers. So all the register in this syntax are treated as a one single big quantum register. Here are also placed a barrier. Mm, it's so now it's only for visual pur purposes. I will talk more about it later. So here you can see that we have a qubit uh, with index uh, index zero, then with uh, in this zero, but in the second quantum register, but in total, it would have an index of two. And then again, we have here a qubit, uh, which in total have an index of six. And uh, here I also um, write it, that use uh, some Python syntax. I could also write it like uh, this. It would be the same. But using the Pythonic syntax, uh, I can like write some things differently. It's only because we are using uh, Python for that. And here I also do another thing, another way of uh, doing the same thing basically, but I do not recommend uh, the syntax because it looks complicated. And yeah, so, but it's just another way. I do recommend this one and this one. So those two methods of writing. OK, so now uh, let's talk about measurement and using some classical information. So uh, let's uh, classically get some random uh, value. Rand int. 
And for that, um, let's write some Python code. Run int zero comma one. And um, to see it, let's write a print statement. So um, we have classical value. Um, to be some value. So this is a classical Python code. And we start, let's begin as always. So um, write the declare the quantum register. We need only one qubit for that, and um, we don't we we don't need a classical register here, so we don't need to declare it. So I will just write quantum uh, circuit q uh, one, and let's. Let's uh, apply a Hadamard gate to the qubit in this quantum register only if the value uh, here, which is chosen randomly, uh, is equal to one. So um, we will write some classical Python code if some value we can write is equal to one. Uh, but it's shorter just to leave it leave it like this and write uh, Qiskit code. Okay, so here we have classical value of one, so nothing uh, has been applied. Again, zero, again zero. Oh, now we have one, so we applied a Hadamard gate and. Uh, Qiskit recommends if you have some external uh, classical value, it is good to write uh, classical Python code if you are using Qiskit. It's, it's a recommendation, but later on I will show how to use some internal um, classical information which comes, uh, which comes from measurement. So, um, okay. So now let's learn about the measurement. So we have some basic quantum circuit with the Hadamard and we can apply a measurement. I will talk in a second, what is it? So QC measure Q1, uh, zero and yeah, okay. So it looks like this and what does it mean? So if we have a qubit, it, starts in a state cat zero but if we apply it if we apply a Hadamard gate on it then if we make a measurement it will have a 50 percent of being catched in a state cat zero and 50 50 percent of being catched in state one if it's catched in state zero then it's mapped onto the classical register onto the classical bit and if it's in state one, then uh, we will have in our classical register a value of one. So a measurement, uh, first of all, uh, collapses the state of the qubit to cat zero or cat one, and it maps uh, the state of the qubit, which is the result of the measurement, onto the classical register and to be more um, specific, onto the specified uh, classical bit. So here the classical bit indicted, indicted by zero. And it's written in this form. So this, this, uh, this icon is an icon of measurement. Okay, so how to know uh, which one was measured, get zero or get one. And uh, for that, we need to write the following code. I declare a variable named job and I use execute um, function. But one more thing I need to do, I need to import it from Qiskit. So from Qiskit, 
import execute. And one more thing that we will use is the air. So we have execute, then we need to specify which quantum circuit uh, we want to execute. And then we need to specify the backend we want to use. So in this context, the backend is basically kind of information we would like to get uh, from the from the execution. And later on, uh, I will talk more about possible backends. And to cater the result of measurement, we need to use CASM simulator backend. And it looks like this. OK, we can execute it now, but uh, to like get the result. So here it's, it is only executed. So, but we want to gather the information from this execution. So let's create another variable and get the results from the execution. And the syntax looks like this. We get counts. And uh, when we will run as we will learn more about the possible backends, here the syntax will change, but only slightly slightly. Okay, so here we get some counts and we want to print it, of course. So print counts. And maybe let it display the whole symbol. So display you see draw and use multiple clip backend from for drawing. And comes job result. Ah, here's a typo. It's result, not results. So um, here we have the result of our execution. Uh, so uh, the qubit has been cached in state cat0 uh, 490 times, and it stayed cat1 534 times. And if we execute this another time, you can see that the result will uh, change slightly. It is because um, every execution is independent from each other. And in every execution, we have this equal and um, those equal chain chain chances of measuring the qubit in state cat zero and in state cat one. So be, because of uh, this probability, the results will change slightly. And here is also a visual representation. And here, um, so we have a question. Since this, this is the measurement outcome of a superposition, is this measured value and uh, now truly random? Uh, so it's, let's say, as random as the classical computation allows us to do this. And you can write it, uh, mm, let's say you can uh, write this function by yourself. So yes, it's like uh, later on, I will show you how to get the state vector simulator to see the state of the qubit just before the measurement. And from this, you will be able um, to get the probabilities of measuring the qubit in state cat zero and in cat one. So basing of, on those probabilities, Python um, will get a value one or value zero. So um, yes. Uh, we can change the number of executions. Oh. So um, every execution is done independently. And here we have um, this time we obtain state cat one and here cat zero, but only one time. And uh, here is the question uh, about the number of 
uh, repetitions. So yes, by default, it's uh, 1024 or just 1000. Um, let's check it. Uh, yes, so it's 1024, but we can alter it using this uh, shots argument. Um, so how many times this circuit is being run? So by default, it's uh, 1024. Here we can change it, with, so I will show it. And another question, since the measurement outcome, outcomes are random and changes every execution, uh, how we get the right measurement or the wanted state? So um, is the point of quantum computing that you can't get the state. It's like in quantum computing, you want to use um, this probabilities um so you need to deal with the fact that you are you won't get the same output in every execution it's, it's the point of quantum computing that in every execution you can get different results and thus the circuit gets created in the uh, every run so uh, technically no it it is created only once but it is just uh, executed many times from the beginning. So it's like you, you have a reset here and then Python starts from the beginning executing the same circuit, but it does not create it uh, another time because here we create this circuit in, in this part and here we execute the circuit um, 1024 times separately. And then we just gather the results. So here is the distinction. Um, so, yes, uh, Samget is, uh, yes, that's right. This idea that the measurement outcome is random, it's like the idea of uh, quantum computing that you have superposition, but Mm, then you need to deal with some randomness and as a consequence quantum mm, quantum algorithms are not deterministic they are probabilistic algorithms so it is uh, you do not have a guarantee that uh, if you execute the same algorithm on the same data another time you will get the same result so you are there is no guarantee and the quantum noise it's also another topic but yes we we want to we don't want to be sure of that because then um, those computations could be done uh, classically as well okay so i hope i answered all the questions because there were plenty of them and uh, Okay, um, I think here I mistyped something. So here is the code for the thing I written here, but written in a proper way. So it's it's nice to to import all the necessary objects at the very beginning of the code. Uh, so do not do it somewhere in the middle. This way is like it's not incorrect, but it's recommended. Um, here uh, I, I, I will also use another plotting uh, tool. Uh, I will import the hist plot histogram function from Cascade visualization uh, sub package. And this thing um, I, I've already uh, shown. But uh, one small thing to notice is that um, if you have uh, regis two registers, quantum and classical, with the equal number of uh, quantum and classical bits, then you do not need to specify uh, each quantum and classical bit um, you want to use. So you are doing those bulk operations. And here, uh, one more thing I um, need to draw is the histogram. And it's very simple. 
just plot histogram and uh, I think it's something that everyone um, should be able to like google it in a second uh, so let's execute um, our code so yes here you can see that uh, the outcome is written in a way that enables you to detect uh, which qubits come from which register so the first four qubits are from uh, sorry a classical register because uh, here are the because the results of executions are mapped here on the classical register so here the first uh, four numbers indicate the classical register c2 and the other one c1 so you see that the order is reversed and uh, we executed this uh, quantum circuit 100 times and here are the results so uh, it's far from 50 50 but it's the randomness if oh here i get an ideal equality so maybe oh this one looks nicer because we have some here's some randomness and we can also plot the histogram of the results so you can see it is implemented in a very nice way here i also uh, ordered uh, qc draw to reverse the order of bits uh, maybe i will hide it for a second and so you see that just the order of um quantum bits it's why it's reverse bits so quantum bits is reversed so here you have zero and one but now you have one and zero so it's just it's just for uh, visualization and uh, i also noticed uh, something very interesting that you can use this plot histogram function from PSP visualization to visualize uh, like totally not quantum data and so it's a very good way to like shorten your code uh, if you don't like using for example matplotlib but it's uh, just a side notice so now i would like to um, make some case studies so super dense coding so it's a technique of putting uh, two classical bits of information into one qubit it is possible and it is uh, one of the thing um, that uh, can allow us to achieve some kind of quantum advantage let's not call it supremacy but some kind of an advantage and how does it work here is a drawing it's from uh, cubron's materials and if you have an occasion i recommend those i i've also been conducting uh, once um so how does it start so we have some we have two qubits uh, on the first one we apply the hadamard gate then we uh, entangle those two qubits using cx gate and entanglement it's uh, making a long story short um introducing a kind of correlation between two qubits and this correlation is uh, have some like a causality causality so it means that it's not a just a numerical correlation it will affect the future uh, computations so here is the beginning of an algorithm we prepare two qubits the first one Mm, is put in equal superposition state and then we entangle those uh, two qubits then we um, have a classical message and we encode two bits of classical information uh, onto our qubit but uh, we need the second qubit to decode this information so we can store two bits of information on a single qubit uh, but yes we can like store it for a moment uh, but we still need two qubits to decode this information so like yes we still need the second qubit and here is the decoding so 
you can see that we are applying those operations, but in the reverse order. And here is the measurement. OK, so um, let's write a Python code for that. And so here I already written the initial line. And we have pairs of uh, classical information. So we have information 00, zero we have 0, 01, 10, one zero and 11. One one. Uh, so we have every possible combination of two bits, classical bits. And uh, we will test the pro pro procedure for each of the inputs. So I written here a loop, a Python loop. And um, so for every of those, strings of information, this loop will be executed. Um, OK, so we start as usual. So we define a quantum register. We need two qubits, as said. Let's add some nice label. Then we have a classical register, again, with uh, two classical bits, and of course, a quantum circuit. Q and C. And then we prepare those qubits. So we need to apply Hadamard gate and controlled NOT gate. So um, we apply Hadamard gate on the first qubits, uh, which is indiced by zero, and controlled NOT gate uh, where the first qubit is the controller, and the second qubit indiced by one is the target. And uh, for visualization, let's add a barrier. OK, uh, so as mentioned earlier, to use external information, we are writing a classical Python code. And we'll do it um, by following. So if the first bit of information is equal to one, then we apply the Z gate. So it will be QC dot Z, and we will apply it on the first qubit. And also if B is equal to one, so the second bit of information, uh, we will apply the X gate. OK, let's add a barrier. Uh, one thing to notice is that here I uh, put this one as a string. So it's not a number because those are strings, so a character variable. It's not a number. It's treated like um, a, a letter, like a word, um, so a technical remark. And then decoding. So we are doing the beginning, but in the reverse order. You know, I can copy this. And it's very common for quantum algorithms to have the things done like this, where we do the same things, but in a reverse order. And at the very end, we need to measure our qubits. And here I, because I know that the size of those registers are equal, then I can write it like this, so in bulk. So now let's execute the circuit. So I have execute QC, then specify the backend. So uh, CASM simulator. Um, so let's execute the circuit uh, 100 times and then extract the data. Uh, so the results of the execution result and get counts and then print them. So counts and maybe also display and the circuit. I will just copy it to make things faster. OK, so because we have a loop here, the code is executed four times. 
And the first case is where we have uh, classical information set as zero and zero. So you can see that between two, those two barriers, no gates has been, uh, has been applied. Then we have zero and one. So you can see that B is equal to one. So X gate has been applied. And then similarly, we have here A equal to one and B to zero. So we have Z, Z gate and here by the same token, we have Z and X. And you can see here that um, the result, the outcomes of the measurement are, are the one that we expected. So you can see that here the classical information is equal to zero, zero, and it has been decoded as zero, zero. So it means that we, uh, the decoding uh, has been done correctly. So that's, that's a super dense coding technique. And just as an example, how to write some simple circuit. Okay. Mm. Now, another thing I would like to show is how to affect the qubits basing on a value in a classical register. So an internal kind of information, because here and the classical information um, is not a part of a register. So here you see this classical Pythonic code, but we can also affect qubits basing on the value in the classical register. You can see that uh, the classical register is empty for the most time, but um, here I, I would like to show um, a kind of uh, circuit when um, the qubits are affected by the state of, uh, of a classical register. Uh, so here we have uh, quantum and classical circuits, uh, registers. We have uh, we affect one qubit with Hadamard gate. Um, here we done we are doing some measurement, but here we expect the result of this measurement to be zero because every qubit starts in state zero. So we can be 100 100 percent sure that uh, the result of this line will be zero. But here we measure the qubit. Uh, indiced by one, and which we affected by Hadamard gate. So here we have this 50-50. Uh, so the equal superposition state, so we can both have zero and one as the outcome. Uh, so, and we can affect the other qubits uh, using the information that um, has been put into the classical register uh, using the measurement. So uh, how is how is it done? So here I wrote the following. Uh, so affect the qubit Q2 uh, with X gate if uh, the bit in classical register named C and the bit indiced by one uh, has the inform has the value of one. So here I specify which bit controls the operation and here uh, what value should be assigned, uh, what value um, controls the X gate. Um, so, so far by using CX gate, I have shown you earlier, like here, quantum bit affects quantum bit. Um, here, classical bit affects uh, quantum bit, but the classical information is from the outside. And here, the classical information is uh, internal one. And measurement is a kind of affecting the classical bit using quantum bit. Um, okay, um, one thing also to notice is the notation. So I think it's barely visible. This zero X uh, indicates that this number uh, will be written in, uh, 
in a form of uh, like the 16th uh, system. So it's not a decimal, not binary. Um, let's make an example. Oh, here is still one because I do not have enough bits. Um, ah, okay, it's a bit more complicated than, than that. Um, but yes, that, uh, now it should work. Okay, it's F, so F is uh, 15, I believe. Um, ah. okay. Oh, so here you can see that I specified the value which is uh, which like uh, activates the X gate. So it does not need to be zero or one, it can be also the other number. So, and this number is defined by this string. So we need to convert from binary to other mathematical systems. And I believe that most of the time zero and one are used. Okay, um, now I would like to um, go to the other section, so jobs. So, so far, uh, I've been using CASM simulator, um, but this allows us only to cater the results of measurement. And the other simulator we can use is the um, is, is, is unitary simulator. I will jump here. And OK. The task is as follows. So we applied a number of gates um, on our qubits. And like it might be even a hundreds of gates. And after so and we can um, we can express all those gates as a single gate. It is possible. If they are a valid quantum gates, then we can express them as a single quantum and gate as a single matrix. And for that, we need to use a unitary simulator. So how does it work? So here we have some quantum register and the quantum circuit. We have a Hadamard gate and controlled not gate. We have two qubits. And uh, if we use measurement, then we will get an error because measurement cannot be represented um, as a quantum gate uh, as a let's say some default quantum gate we can represent it uh, using linear algebra but it's not uh, a default quantum gate and for that uh, we need to use execute function on qc uh, quantum uh, circuit and just get the backend uh, unitary simulator. And then um, let's e extract this matrix um, using the following code. So job result, so it's similar to the previous one, but here we write get unitary. You see? And we can also specify um, how accurate we want to be when displaying it. So decimals, let's say, will be equal to three, and then print this matrix. Mm, okay. So I have the following quantum circuit, and here is uh, the matrix that represents all the operations done here. So let's say if I have only the Hadamard gate, then um, you can see that it looks like Hadamard gate, but we have two qubits, so it's not uh, two by two matrix, but four by four. If I would have here three uh, qubits, then it would be eight by eight. Uh, if we have four qubits, it will be uh, 16 by 16, and so on and so on. 
and uh, this backend is specific for classical computation so it's not a quantum computation and if you have a really complex quantum algorithm then uh, you will need to wait pretty pretty long so it's helpful for small problems and for bigger problems the matrix will be also extremely big because look for example for 10 qubits it, you will have over 1000 uh, rows and columns so it's a gig uh, gigantic mm. one thing also to notice is that it is not a numpy uh, object it's an operator an operator is an object uh, it's a class of object uh, created by Kiskit. And more about it, I will say later. Here is um, here is a script that displays this matrix in, let's say, friendly form. So I think uh, it's sometimes used to uh, good to use it for visualization. Okay. Mm. We have a question, but we have also an answer. So, yes, so Camila is uh, right. So, thank you. Uh, so, let's move, let's move on. Um, okay, so uh, previously there was a question about uh, checking the state of the qubit at an arbitrary moment. So, let's say I would like to check the state of the qubit just before the measurement. So let's say I, I wouldn't like to base my computations uh, on repetition. So by approximating uh, the probabilities by running the circuit many times. So let's say I would like to get exact probabilities and also get the exact amplitudes. I will like I will explain what the amplitudes are in a moment. And here the story is very similar to unitary matrix. So we still shouldn't use measurement because we will get an error. The backend is state vector simulator. And here we just go, instead of get counts or get unitary, we write get state vector. And we can print the results. So here we have a vector of four elements and um, we can also display it in nicer form and here is a technical remark because uh, here I just uh, use some very simple code um, but Qiskit is going to make some technical changes to state vector object so uh, this method of printing um, is not recommended, as you can see. So we can expect that in the future release of Qiskit, we will get an error. So far, so good. We get only a warning. So yes, uh, here we get the state vector of our um, quantum system. And from that, you can extract the probabilities of measuring each state because here the amplitudes are written and you can extract the probabilities from those amplitudes by raising them to the to the second power and so if you raise it to the second power uh, you will get here 0 0.5 here 0 here 0 and here 0 0.5 which in the, um, which indicates this equal superposition state uh, I said uh, raise it to the power to the second power, um, but it's like uh, if we act, uh, if we have some imaginam imaginary numbers here, so complex number, which is common, and then we need to use the second norm. But here, just for presentation purposes, I used um, just I'm, I'm saying just only about raising it to the second power. So here are the amplitudes, and uh, if you are like familiar with quantum computing, like most of the thing um, will be displayed in a form of amplitudes because amplitudes can be also negative, then can then can also be imaginary, 
but uh, using this second power or second norm, you can extract probabilities, exact probabilities of measuring the qubits in each state. And here is the probability, uh, here is the amplitude that corresponds to state zero, zero, here zero, one, here one, zero, and here one, one. And previously, for example, we have here some very long states of zero, 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 here zero, 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 and so on, one, zero. So by executing this circuit many times, you can approximate those probabilities. But first of all, it's only an approximation. And secondly, you lose about the, you lose the information about the local phase. So these minuses and pluses and imaginary numbers. OK, uh, so now I would like to show you how to uh, execute your Qiskit code on a real quantum computer. So you can do this by uh, signing uh, up to um, IBM Quantum Composer. You can even sign up using your, for example, GitHub, LinkedIn, or Google account. Uh, I heard uh, it is funny because IBM do not uh, does not recommend creating a separate account for that, but it's only a remark. Uh, I don't know why. So here I create. I have some very simple circuit. Uh, we have a Hadamard gate and a CX gate. I can use here uh, drag and drop. Here you see the uh, Qiskit code for this for this circuit. And uh, you can also write here uh, ah, because it's it only. Um, but as you dig into this uh, <laughs> Sorry. As you dig into the IBM Quantum Composer, you will, uh, let's say, uh, find out how to write the code by yourself in Qiskit. So we can see it's already visualized here, but uh, it's not exactly the code that will be executed. It is uh, translated, or I should say, let's say, transpired to assembly language, open chasm. And you can see that this assembly language is quite similar to Qiskit. So you have this quantum register, you have a classical register. Here is uh, the Hadamard gate um, acting on quantum register named Q on the qubit indiced by zero. Here you have this CX gate and another Hadamard gate. And here we will have a real quantum computation. Here are the expected probabilities of measuring each, um, each state. So let's set up and run. And probably we will have to wait. OK, we will also need to uh, declare the number of shots. So I will set it to maybe 100. And this is optional. And here you can see that uh, we have a job limit. Um, because like it's it's it, the servers are buzzy because it's like open. Uh, it's for free. So you IBM like gives you some free access to the real quantum computer. And here um, you can see. Uh, how many jobs are pending and what does it mean that uh, we need to wait until other users will execute their quantum circuits. Maybe I wish uh, here the queue is kind of sm relatively small. Okay, so let's run and uh, I forget about the measurement. Okay. Okay, so let's run and and now we basically 
need to wait. Oh, we have job already done, which is, oh, it's pending still. So we, we, will, we need to wait, wait, wait in queue. And I see that the queue is uh, very long, but uh, I remember sometimes I was lucky to wait six seconds and sometimes this queue is like two weeks long. So it's you have like very limited access to real quantum infrastructure. Okay. So unluckily, I am unable to show you how to um, interpret the results of the computation, but you will see that uh, the results will be far from the expected ones because uh, there is a quantum noise. So the infrastructure is still like not perfect. Okay, so the last thing, because I maybe transpilation, I will summarize in one sentence, are the arbitrary operations. And uh, I've shown you the list of those basic gates. They have their abbreviations. You can also see here that they are already defined using this drag and drop. But sometimes you might want to um, construct your own quantum gate. And uh, I will maybe scroll down to it because I think it's like kind of important. Um, oh, here. So um, I uh, told you that the unitary uh, backend gives you an operator object. And we can use this operator object to pass our own quantum gate, quantum operator to our uh, quantum circuit. So we don't need to use only predefined uh, quantum gates. We can uh, do it by um, ourselves. We can construct our own operator. Here I will copy already prepared code uh, because I think it's uh, kind of simple and it's like easy to Google. Um, so we need to import operator objects. It's uh, from Qiskit. And we uh, construct the operator. And so first of all, we name our operator. Let's name it UOP. And for that, we need to uh, specify that it will be an operator. So basically, we are using operator function to create an operator. And here we need to pass a matrix that will look like uh, the quantum gate. Um, so it will be operator. So let's say we want to create a quantum gate out of this matrix. So it, it is some kind of quantum operator that acts on two qubits. And here we created our own operator. And let's say that um, I want to um, use this operator. And here the syntax is, uh, let's say it looks unusual compared to the things we have already seen. We need to use append method. And here we need to specify the name of our operator and then specify the qubits we are acting on because our quantum register has two qubits, then I don't need to manually specify which qubit I'm acting on. Mm, and but because our operator acts on two qubits, and for example, if our quantum register have uh, has, for example, three qubits, then we need to think about it and write this in form of a Pythonic list and take care about the parentheses. So here. Uh, in those uh, squared brackets, which is a Pythonic list, I'm passing uh, the qubits I'm acting on. And uh, okay, so let's execute it. So here you see our 
matrix right uh, written down as an operator and here you can see how it was visualized and if you then use this unitary simulator on this circuit you will get this operator again um okay mm, i think we are kind of running out of time so in short i will mention a few more things i would like to show you one of them is oh it's resetting the qubits so um sometimes it is very useful um, to use a single qubit again instead of using many qubits because you can uh, out the quantum infrastructure is kind let's say uh, limited so we do not have access to many quantum bits so instead sometimes it is advised to use the same quantum bit twice or three times or four times and so on but if we measure a qubit and then we want to use it again we are not sure if the qubit won't start in state q uh, in state cat one and for that we can use the uh, we can reset it simply by typing reset and then uh, similarly to passing gates uh, just tell Kiskit to reset a given qubit to state cat zero so it is very useful in some long and complex algorithms and I will um, share this file here are some more examples like when to use this resetting and uh, one another thing are those barriers and transpilation so if you execute a quantum circuit uh, you can be sure that uh, you um, that it will be executed on the quantum infrastructure in the same way so let me show you some examples so let's start with something easy um, QFT size, I didn't declare it. So QFT size, let's say it will be equal, equal to. So I have a very simple uh, quantum circuit. We have uh, applied X gate uh, two times. And I used here the transpiler. And here, because I, um, because uh, a transpilation in Qiskit will try to um, simplify our circuit if there are some unnecessary operations. Here, uh, all those operations are considered to be necessary because they affect our circuit significantly. So here, let's use X gate twice. But here I uh, set optimization level of our of the transpiler to zero. So because I set it to zero, nothing will be simplified. But what is here to simplify? So if you apply X gate twice, it will change nothing because it's like if you apply the X gate for the first time on qubit in the state uh, cat zero it will uh, be changed to cat1 and if you apply it for the second time it will be changed again to state zero it's just a reflection um, but if i if i uh, use higher optimization level then this operation will disappear because it's unnecessary because it changes nothing so let's remove it for optimization purposes and if you uh, try to pass such a circuit uh, to this IBM uh, compiler then it will be simplified uh, but what if you don't want to simplify a given piece of code a given part of quantum circuit you can put a barrier so if you are using only a classical Kiskit classically, then a barrier is just for visualization purposes. But if you are using 
a real quantum device, then putting a barrier um, will restrain um, the transpiler from simplifying the circuit over the barrier. So here, because I use the barrier, those X gates cannot be simplified. And the optimization level tells us uh, how much we allow the transpiler to simplify our circuit. Optimization level equal, if the optimization level is equal to zero, then it's not simplified. If one or two, uh, if one, uh, let's say, some basic things are simplified, this is a basic thing that I've shown you. If it's equal to two, then some more complex things are simplified and it, the highest level of optimization now is three and it will simplify the most, let's say, complex things. But IBM does not recommend using optimization level uh, equal to three because it uh, might affect the quantum, our circuit. So it might change the logic. It might uh, change uh, the way we are doing. So it, um, let's say it will not only simplify the code, but it, it will change uh, the logic of our code um, because uh, due to numerical errors. So it's, uh, it's like a very extreme optimization. Okay, uh, so the question is uh, if I can share this Jupyter notebook. Yes, I will upload this to this link I sent at the very beginning. Maybe I will send it another time. And even I think uh, today I will uh, I will even upload this notebook. Uh, so I think that's uh, I managed to show you the most important things um, and it's already longer than I thought so thank you for your attention thank you for your uh, questions if there are any other questions then I will be happy to answer them and maybe I will show myself because I totally have forgotten about it <laughs> okay great thank you thank you Przemek uh, thanks to you for this great presentation and answering all the questions. I don't see more questions on our chat, so maybe the last chance to ask something and uh, maybe I will also just share uh, my slides for a while. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, so yeah, we well, thank you for your attention for joining this meeting and we would like to thank once again our strategy partners, Larp and Cogit, and our own honorary partners for supporting us. For sure there will be next meetups, but we are not sure when yet. Uh, we hope that we'll manage to organize the next one in December, uh, but uh, we are not sure yet. So uh, stay tuned, please follow us on our uh, social media and uh, our mailing list and of course we'll let you know and we'll announce uh, the next meeting soon okay i think i can stop sharing my slides now and also stop recording <laughs>